We welcome you here tonight as we begin our Triduum celebration. This is a single liturgy which begins tonight and lasts for three days. As we recall Jesus' life, his, death, his passion, death, and resurrection. It may have been a night like tonight as friends of Jesus gathered with him around a table. A sense of stillness, of expectancy, maybe of sadness, certainly a sense of sacredness hung in the air. The 12 did not realize, but Jesus knew. His hour had come. We now know, so the impact of what was said and what was done takes on all the more significance. For one treasures every word and every gesture of the last hours of a loved one's presence. These powerful memories of being washed and fed move us through the agony of Good Friday to the light of the Easter Vigil. I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Remember and do this in remembrance of me. And now for the presentation of the oils. Before Mass actually begins this evening, we will do the presentation of the oils that will be used over this next year. These oils were blessed at the Christmas Mass this past Tuesday by Bishop John, and there are three distinct oils that we use in the Roman Catholic tradition. And as I said, these will be used over the next year, and then when next year comes during Holy Week, the old oils will be burned, and then the new oils will be blessed and used throughout this liturgical year. So at this time, we will have the presentation of the oils. And first, there is the oil of the sick. This oil of the sick has been blessed by our Bishop John for the healing of body, mind, and soul. May the sick who are anointed with it experience the compassion of Christ and his saving love. The oil of catechumens This oil of catechumens has been blessed by our Bishop John for the anointing of those preparing for baptism. Through this anointing, they are strengthened by Christ to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all of its forms as they prepare for the saving waters of baptism. The sacred chrism. This holy chrism, a mixture of olive oil and perfume, has been consecrated by our Bishop John and the priests of our diocese. It will be used to anoint infants after baptism, it will be used to anoint those who are receiving the sacrament of confirmation. It is also used for bishops and priests at their ordinations. And the sacred chrism is also used on altars and churches at the time of their dedication.
Good evening and welcome to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Church, including all those watching at home by live stream for our Holy Thursday Mass. Our projectors are not working this evening, but all the music is in the hymnals. Our processional is number 289, Glory in the Cross, 289. Please stand. As we gather on this Holy Thursday to celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper, let us begin as always with the sign of our salvation and our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Amen. Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you rescue those in trouble. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ Jesus, you show us the path to life. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only be God. Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us.
O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, It shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lentil of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bittered herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on the same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion in the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. Our 
blessing cup is a communion in the blood of Christ. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of Passover... Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, He rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. 
so you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Your sins be washed away. I have given you a model to follow so that as I have done for you, you should also do. So Jesus says to his disciples, we live in a society where people often put their own needs ahead of the needs of others. We live in a culture where taking rather than giving is almost the rule rather than the exception. We don't seem to mind stepping around or over anyone to get what we want. So what Jesus did for his disciples is a little unnerving in the simple act of washing the disciples' feet. Jesus shows us the virtue and the humility of living a life of service. If this is the model of ministry that Jesus brought into this world, then do we fully appreciate what he did and continues to do for us? Jesus has taught us that love is stronger than hate. Jesus has taught us that anyone who wishes to be great must be the servant of all. And Jesus has taught us that there is no love greater than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. The life of our Lord and Savior was one of self-sacrifice, unconditional love, and inexhaustible mercy. Discipleship is always focused on the welfare of others. It is never centered on one's self. For the followers of Christ, our mission and our goal must always be driven by our desire to be Christ-like for others. Sometimes in our very broken world, the only experience another person will ever have of the light and the love of Christ is what we model for them. In our conduct with each other, May we always keep in mind the examples of our Lord and Savior. He reached out and touched a leper. He gave a second chance to a woman caught in the act of adultery. He washed his disciples' feet. He forgave those who insulted and mistreated him. He rewarded a repentant thief with salvation and he laid down his life for the forgiveness of our sins. He took on our flesh. He took on our sins so that we could experience redemption, and by his wounds we are healed. These are the kinds of things that Jesus did for us. No one was beyond his consideration He was never too busy to reach out and help those most in need. He looked beyond the labels that society placed on individuals and saw the dignity of the human person. We know what Jesus did for us. Now the question is, what are we willing to do for Jesus? If we are ever not sure, if we are ever 
in doubt, then let the words of Jesus spoken to his disciples 2,000 years ago provide us with guidance and direction in 2022. I have given you a model to follow so that as I have done for you, you should also do. And then let us take the words of our Lord and Savior and let us daily put them into action. At this time, we will have the traditional washing of the feet. Please remain seated, and if those who are to have their feet washed would please come forward.
Having listened to the word of God, let us now place our needs before our Heavenly Father. For our, oh God. For our Holy Father, our bishops and priests, whose ordination was instituted at the Last Supper, that their consecrated lives of priestly service may continue to flow from the Eucharist, which they offer in the person of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For peace, that the blood of the divine Lamb may keep the destructive blow of war and oppression from us, and that each of us may partake of the Lamb with staff in hand, ready for the journey that justice will demand of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all of us in every capacity of loving service that we give to each other, that our Lord's humility and self-emptying, symbolized by the foot washing, may continue in our mutual reverence and devotion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who are far from the sacraments, for the sick and addicted, the imprisoned and abused, the lonely and the poor, that this night of love and suffering may draw them into communion with Jesus, who has the remedy for their wounds. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all of us who share this Eucharist, remembering most vividly that hour when Jesus showed us the very depths of his love, that we might express our gratitude to him by being faithful in all that he asks of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elect and candidates, preparing for the Easter sacraments, that they have our unfailing support every step of the way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the intentions listed in our parish book of prayer, and for all of the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for the health and welfare of your pastor, Father Charles, that he will make a full and speedy recovery, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear the prayers of your family before you, those spoken and those which we hold in the silence of our hearts. If it be your will, grant answers to our petitions. Open our eyes and our hearts to see how we can help bring these petitions to fulfillment by loving one another as you have loved us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the preparation of the gifts. Our offertory hymn is number 288, Where Charity and Love Prevail, 288.
as members of his body join, we are in Christ we Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these sacred mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We give them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy 
and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen.
the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am now worthy that you should enter into my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. This is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me. This is the body that will You. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. This is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me.
For those watching at home by live stream, please join in the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. In just a moment, we will begin our sacred procession with the consecrated host's blessed sacrament over to the parish hall where it will be reposed for the evening. We will do a procession through the church and then the servers and Deacon Spencer and I will lead out. The choir will follow behind us and then the congregation is asked to join behind the choir to join us over for singing and for some sacred silence with the blessed sacrament. If you must leave, I ask that you please do so in silence so it's not to disturb those who wish to remain behind in silent prayer. Thank you very much.
Yeah. 